Hi, welcome to why the Gaussian distribution, or normal distribution, is important. In this video we're going to talk about the Gaussian distribution, also called the normal distribution. Now this distribution shows up in a wide variety of contexts in all fields of science. It's also important for understanding uncertainties on measurements. Here we'll discuss some characteristics of the Gaussian distribution and point out ways it pops up in nature. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's start by taking a look at the Gaussian distribution. Here we've written it as f of x given mu and sigma. And so it's a function of x, but it has two parameters, mu and sigma. So let's plot this for a few values of mu and sigma and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we show the Gaussian distribution for three sets of parameters, mu and sigma. So first we have the red curve. This has mu equals zero and sigma equals one. And you can see that it has a peaking structure around x equals zero. Next, in the purple, we have mu equals three and sigma equals one. This curve looks the same except it's shifted over and centered around x equals three. And lastly, we have the blue curve, which has mu equals zero, sigma equals 0 0.5. Now this curve, again, is centered around x equals zero, but we see that it's narrower than our red curve. So the Gaussian distribution is a symmetric function centered around mu, and sigma determines the width of the peak. Okay, so now we know what the function looks like. Let's see some examples of how this shows up in nature. If you watched the video, Why the Poisson Distribution is Important, it's everywhere, you saw some examples of where the Poisson Distribution shows up in nature. There we saw that the Poisson Distribution described things such as radioactive decay, holes in one on a golf course, and instances of winning the lottery. Poisson statistics describe situations where an event occurs randomly, but has a constant probability of happening per unit time. Then, if the averaged expected number of occurrences of the event in a certain time interval is lambda, the probability that the event actually occurs m times in that interval is given by the Poisson distribution, shown here. Now, that expression holds for any value of lambda and any value of m. However, if lambda is large, the Poisson distribution starts to approximate a Gaussian distribution that has mu equal to lambda and sigma equal to the square root of lambda. So our Poisson distribution basically turns into a Gaussian distribution. Now, while the Poisson distribution is correct in these cases, the Gaussian distribution is an approximation which becomes really good for large values of lambda. And it also turns out that the Gaussian form is a lot easier to use. So let's revisit a few examples from our previous video on why the Poisson distribution is important. So in that video, we saw that if you have a radioactive sample that has, on average, 0.31 decays per second, and you watch it for 10 seconds, the number of decays is described by a Poisson distribution with lambda equal 3.1. But if you watched for 10,000 seconds, lambda would equal 3,100, and the Gaussian distribution would likely suit your needs. We also looked at a golf course which had, on average, 10.4 holes in one per year. So if you're looking at this golf course over a year, the number of holes in one that occur would be described by the Poisson distribution. But if you're looking at 100 golf courses over a year, you might want to switch to the Gaussian instead. So the Gaussian distribution is useful for Poisson processes in the case that lambda gets large. Now let's see some other ways in which the Gaussian distribution arises. So let's say we have a random walk. We imagine some object located at x equals zero. Every second, it moves one unit, either to the right toward positive x or to the left toward negative x. It moves to the left or right randomly with equal probability and the steps are independent. After n seconds, where is the object located? 
Okay, so at t equals zero, it's located at x equals zero. So at t equals one second, the object can be at either of two locations. It can either be at x equals minus one or at x equals one. Here in blue, we've put the number of paths that the object could possibly take and get to a certain location. So at t equals two seconds, there are three possible locations where the object could be. There is one path that leads it to x equals minus two. That's if it went left twice. There are two paths that could lead it to x equals zero. So that's if it goes left and then right or right and then left. And there is one path that leads it to x equals two. That's if it goes right twice. At t equals three seconds, there are four places that the object could be. One path leads it to x equals minus three. Three paths lead it to x equals minus one. Three paths lead it to x equals one. And one path leads it to x equals three. At t equals four seconds, there are five places that the object can be, ranging from x equals minus four to x equals four. At this point, we're starting to see that there are many more paths that lead the object to be toward the center of the distribution and fewer paths leading it to be near the edge of the distribution. So the peaking behavior near x equals zero becomes clearer with an increasing number of steps. Here, we show the probability distribution after 20 steps. With many steps, the distribution looks a lot like a Gaussian with mu equals zero. So if we add together a lot of independent random variables whose values tend to be of about the same size, the probability distribution for their sum tends to look a lot like a Gaussian. So here we added up a bunch of independent steps which randomly were toward plus x or minus x. So for example, the probability distribution for the winnings of one gambler at a slot machine over a five minute span might not look very Gaussian, but that for the combined winnings of 1,000 gamblers at slot machines over those same five minutes quite possibly will. As another example, you could roll a fair die many times and add up the results you get. If you rolled the die enough times, the probability distribution for the sum would look like a Gaussian. As another example, let's say a veterinarian weighs every dog that comes into their office. Now, the weight of dogs is probably not Gaussian distributed. Chihuahuas and Dobermans have very different typical weights. But if the veterinarian averages the weights of dogs that come in on a given day and then plots every day's average, that will likely closely approximate a Gaussian distribution. So the Gaussian distribution shows up in nature a lot because there are many situations in which a lot of small effects sum up to the thing you actually measure. Now, one place where this effect is particularly relevant is measurement uncertainties. Let's say you're trying to measure some quantity, like the distance to a star. There will be many sources of measurement error. Some will push the result of your measurement to be a bit higher than the true value, and some will push it to be a bit lower than the true value. As long as there are many independent sources of error, and one or a few of them aren't much bigger than the rest, they will tend to add up to a total uncertainty that is roughly Gaussian distributed. So it is very reasonable to assume that measurement uncertainties are Gaussian distributed, this is usually what is meant when a measurement uncertainty is quoted. So a measurement uncertainty of three light years on the distance to a star does not mean that the difference between the measured value and the true value is less than or equal to three light years. Instead, it means that the difference between the true value and the measured value is expected to be distributed as a Gaussian with sigma equal to three light years. However, there's a negative side to this too. Because a Gaussian is mathematically fairly easy to work with, we tend to take uncertainties as Gaussian even in cases where that assumption is dubious. So it's important to know that this is one way that mistakes can be made when handling measurement uncertainties. Okay, so now let's summarize. Here we've seen some places that the Gaussian, or normal distribution, can show up in nature. First, the Poisson distribution tends to a Gaussian for large lambda, so Poisson distributed quantities look Gaussian if a large number of occurrences is expected. 
Second, we saw that the sum of many independent random variables, as long as their values typically are of a similar size, tends to look Gaussian. So quantities that are the sum of many small independently varying pieces tend to approximately be Gaussian distributed. And lastly, one place where this effect comes up is in measurement uncertainties, as long as there are many independent sources of error and the total error is not dominated by one or a few of them.